And Manly P. Hall tells us, the genuine esoteric associations always required that disciples prepare themselves for careers of practical service. The student was expected to attain a state of unusual skill or proficiency in some branch of learning. He was then to practice this profession or craft as a, mat, as a means of extending his sphere of constructive influence. He was to teach through example, enriching his chosen vocation with the overtones of enlightened religious philosophy, thus gradually creating a significant zone of influence. He was available for whatever task the keepers of the great plan required. So if you're a member of a group like Freemasonry, they want you to work towards this goal of one world government and the new age the, that they call the great plan. And Alice Bailey tells us how they're going to do this. She says, by means of the educational work of the world, the great Lord, who she refers to in this book as Lucifer, seeks to reach those of the intelligent public who cannot be reached by means of ceremonial and symbolism as in masonry, or by religious means and rituals as in the church. It touches the masses and those in whom the intelligent aspects predominate. What she's telling us here is, and we'll read it again in this next one, is the three main channels through which the preparation for the New Age is going on might be regarded as the church, the Masonic fraternity, and the educational field. We're going to get them in the churches to, uh, to bring in this New Age, but not everybody goes to church. So we'll teach them in the fraternities, but not everybody goes to a Masonic lodge. So then the safety net for it all is education. We're in a period is of what is called externalization of the hierarchy. They're taking what was done in secret a uh, hundred years ago and they're externalizing what was done by the hierarchy in secret into society. So that's why when I go down the street and I get a meal at a fast food place, here is a wizard doing magic with Lilith, the owl, and throwing energy balls on my hamburger sack. And then I go down the street, and here's an identical looking wizard and fire and ice, which are important symbols in the occult. And then I go to the na next fast food place, and this is their placemat, and it blows me away. How to hypnotize your parents. And then I go on to the library, and they're handing this out as you go through the door, Metaphysics for Our Age. And I look inside the library book, and they have the symbol for the Illuminati, a snake swallowing its tail, and it says Illumino. And then I find out that it's Freemasons running our libraries and our school system. And I go to the laundromat, and here's a lady who's channeling demons, and she's going to teach how to use your spiritual energy, and she's teaching this in the Portland Masonic Temple. And I come home and I think, well, it's safe to read the food section in the paper at least. <laughs> and here's a witch teaching witchcraft in the food section. Now, I told you that they're going to use education to bring in the externalization of the hierarchy. My wife has taught in a public school, and this public school for the last 15 years has had nothing to do with Christmas. They have an occult ritual uh, winter solstice program during that time period and in 1991 this was the program that they gave the parents who came to a meeting like this to watch their children put on the play and they celebrated the return of Lucifer and inside this is the program and the children on stage some of them had acceptable barcodes on their foreheads and some of them had unacceptable barcodes on their foreheads and by the way I happened to send this uh, um, one day to Tex Mars and he put it on the front of his newsletter. Now, getting back to Alice Bailey, she says the Masonic movement will meet the need of those who can and should well power as the custodian of the law, as the home of the mysteries, and the seat of initiation. It holds in its symbolism the ritual of deity and the way of salvation is pictorially preserved in its work. The methods of deity are demonstrated in its temples and under the all-seeing eye, the work can go forward. It is a far more occult organization than can be realized. 
and is intended to be the training school for the coming advanced occultists. In its ceremonials lies hid the welding of the forces connected with the growth and life of the kingdoms of nature and the unfoldment of the divine aspects of man. If you're an Illuminati uh, boy, the Illuminati wants you to go through Freemasonry to learn the outer symbols of the mystery religions. But the real hardcore rituals of the mystery religions are reserved for Illuminati rituals or some of the higher rites of Freemasonry. This is a cover of one of the Scottish rites magazines. The Supreme Council of 33rd Degree, their official magazine, has been known as the New Age magazine for 100 years. They've been promoting the New Age movement for a long time. In the 70s and 80s, Christians were still debating whether there was a New Age movement. And in the inside of this magazine is a page which has a very interesting quote. As stated before, God's plan in America is a non-sectarian plan. Our Constitution is non-sectarian. Our great American public schools, God's chosen schools, are non-sectarian. The great spirit behind the great nation is non-sectarian. Our great American public schools have never taken away from any child the freedom of will, freedom of spirit, or freedom of mind. That is the divine reason that great God, our King, has chosen the great American public schools to pave the way for the new race, the new religion, and the new civilization that is taking place in America. Any mother or father or guardian who is responsible for the taking away of freedom of mind, freedom of will, or freedom of spirit is the lowest criminal on this earth because they take away from that child the God-given right to become part of God's great plan in America for the dawn of the new age of the world. They're saying, shame on you, Christian parents, for sending your kids to Christian school. You are the lowest criminal on earth. And here is Lucius Trust, um, just a letter from them indicating that their triangles groups are in 110 countries. <clears throat> this is from another Masonic magazine. It says, Masonry's greatness is not in the antiquity of its beginnings, neither in its conservatism, but rather in the fact that it has always been a leader of thought and action. I repeat, a comprehensive understanding of the history of Masonry leads inevitably to the conclusion that not through conservatism has it most served the world, but rather through its spirit of unrest, its utter abhorrence of unnecessary restraint, its abiding love for liberty, its unconquerable desire to progress away from the old to the new and better conditions. Wherever the conflict has been waged between the old and the new, between a narrow conservatism and real progress, our Masonic brethren have been found on the right side, witness the members of St. Andrew's Lodge of the Green Dragon who threw the tea into Boston Harbor. I wish I had a dollar for every time that I have, been, I, I have heard someone talk about the Boston Tea Party being a tax revolt against high taxes. What actually happened? British Parliament drastically slashed taxes. So why would people revolt against that? Well, the people didn't. But the Masons at that time period were smuggling uh, opium into this country in the bottom of ships. They are also smuggling in tea. And when British Parliament drastically cut import taxes, it made their, their illegal tea uncompetitive with the legal tea. And they were upset that this was going to cut into their profits. So when they were going to have their lodge meeting that night at the Green Dragon Inn, and you might remember that name for later on it might come up, they decided, and if you look in the minutes of their lodge meeting, you'll see that they decided to cancel their meeting that night, and they, just, they planned to dress up in, as Indians, and then they went down to Boston Harbor, and there was this poor captain who was at the wrong place at the wrong time, and they dumped millions of dollars of his, however much it was, of his tea right into Boston Harbor. It was a criminal act, and now history has been tweaked a little bit, 